and welcome to a new video on the channel and this time we're going to talk about reactive programming in Unity and we're going to create a little game where I have my mouse cursor in the cube which switches colors and I have to collide this cube with cubes of the same color to gain points. The interesting way is we're going to do it in a reactive way using the Unity package R3 which is the successor of UniRx and provides us with an awesome way to do it in Unity. And before getting started, just the link is in the description box and the setup process is as follows. You have to install the R3 from NuGet using NuGet for Unity. This is the first step documented here. After you've done that, use the link provided here and add your package from the Git URL. After that's done, everything is set up. I'm just going to show you that within Unity. So you're going to install the NuGet for Unity. The link is over here. It's also in the description box. You can, of course, add this to via the git dependence in the package manager and afterwards you use this link here so having a look at the package manager you see that here is the new get for unity link after that's installed new get manage new get packages type r3 click on search i already have it installed Here's the R3 package. And again, the package manager. Add package from git URL. First hand for new git for unity, and the second time for R3. After all this is set up, you're basically good to go. And let's create the scene together. I just have a main camera, a normal directional light, the global volume. This is all the default stuff from Unity. Then I added an empty game object for the cube manager. A cube called score cube. This is the red cube here, which will follow the mouse and has a mouse follower script attached. The cube manager has, of course, the cube manager script attached. There is a canvas with a unity text. Make sure to use the legacy text here. Right click UI legacy text because UniRx does currently not support TextMesh Pro and the event system is added by Unity when adding the canvas. For the project setup, I have four materials, a blue color, a blue color with reduced alpha and the surface type of transparent. And the red, same goes for the red color and the red color alpha. I have prefabs, the color cube. This is just a normal Unity cube where everything is reset with the red color and the color cube script attached where the materials refer to the blue and the red color. The scenes is the sample scene. The scripts are just all four scripts, color cube, cube manager, mouse follower, and a custom observable event. And the rest is as the default setup from Unity comes when you start an empty URP project. Going over to the scripting, starting with the mouse follower first, as this is something that stands for it alone. First of all, I have the serialized field for the camera. This is the main camera just linked here. On the score cube, here we go, the main camera is linked in the mouse follower script. There is an I disposable for our subscription. And now the magic for the Rx or the R3 in this case happens. I'm creating an observable that happens every update and every update I'm trying to get my mouse position, convert this mouse position to the screen to via the screen to world point function in the world position setting the set position to zero and apply it to the current transform. And when this object is 
destroyed. I want to cancel everything here and I'll just tell the subscription to dispose. So this is responsible that the scroll cube, this one here, follows my mouse. The color cube, on the other hand, is our prefab, the component that's attached to a prefab. It has a reference to our color pool. This is just a public variable. The materials, red and blue. And a reference for the rigid body, the mesh renderer, and again here, the eye disposable subscription. And if it awakens, we're adding the component references for rigid body and the mesh renderer. And on start, we're creating an every value changed observable, which checks every time our transform value changes. We're going to get the position. And if the position is smaller than minus five, that means the color cube fall out of our viewport. In this case, we're going to release it back to the pool. We're using Unity object pools for that. And that's it basically. And when we're going to do the on enable because every time it's released, the game object is set active, is set to inactive. And if it's getting out of the pool again, it's activated. So via the on enable, we're going to set the trends from position to a default value and we're randomizing the X part of this value, resetting the rigid body velocity changing the material randomly to red or blue and we're adding some kind of torque just to make it spin a little bit so that it looks a little bit more fancy and again via on destroy we're going to cancel our every value changed subscription so we already saw two different things the every value changed and the every update observables of our R3 package, which enables us to not having to write an update method or something else. Every time we can just define it by one line or one big command. Speaking of object pools, Unity supports object pooling. We'll look into that in a second, but this link is as always in the description box and make sure to try out the Unity object pools yourself. It basically saves you a ton of time using the Unity object pools. And one example on how to use this is implemented in the cube manager here. And the cube manager has a reference to our score cube, which follows the mouse, our color cube prefab, and the score text. There is a serializable reactive property, we will handle that in a second, which is serialized and used for subscriptions. And we have our alpha materials for changing our cube material. And let's have a look at it in the editor. Here's our cube manager. There's the score cube. This is the color cube prefab. And the score text beneath the canvas, which is just normal legacy text. And here are the materials, the blue and the red color alpha. This is the score value. We'll see how that works in a second. And as a private variable, the Unity object pool from type color cube. So in this pool, color cube objects are stored. Let's get started with it. We define a new pool, new object pool, and reference the methods for on create. Every time a new object is created, this method will be called on get. Every time we get an object that's already in the pool, this, this method is called on returned, is called when the object is obviously returned, and on destroyed is called when the object is destroyed. There are many overloads for this method. We're staying with the simple part here. Then we're creating an observable random event trigger. I'm just telling you now that this is not part of the default R3 package. I implemented that myself. We'll have a look at it afterwards. And on that stream, we will just randomly get an object out of our object pool, in this case, the color cubes. We'll reference our pool variable here, giving the color cube knowledge of the pool. Uh, 
and this four five lines are everything we need to spawn our objects into the object pool into the scene from the object pool into the scene the color cube itself checks when it's going to be released here and just to examine the object pool a little bit further let's have a look what happens on create on create we're going to instantiate a color cube object again the prefab is used here a random range range for x with no rotation when it's returned we're just setting it the active state to false if we're pulling it from the pool, we're setting the active state to true. And if it's destroyed, we're going to destroy it. Furthermore, the score cube has a rigid body and a collider on it. Furthermore, our color cubes have rigid bodies and colliders on them. Prefabs, color cube. Here's a collider, and here is a rigid body. And our score cube only has the box collider here. We could also use some kind of rigid body to move it around. Maybe to just add that rigid body here. Move it up a little bit and no gravity and it's no kinematic. So everything is set up now. There's a box collider, rigid body, and we'll just move the cube around with, with our mouse. And as soon as it is colliding with some sort of thing, we're subscribing to the on trigger enter event check if the red part of our color matches the red part of the colliding object. So this is the colliding object, the X, set it exactly the other way around. And this is a score cube. And if the colors match, we will get one point. And if the colors don't match, there will be one point subtracted from our score. And again, here we have the random event trigger that we will see in a second and on a random event we're going to change the material from our score cube and we can tell our score to subscribe to a text this is again a package of the r3 package and write our score every time it changes to the text and that's it basically for the cube manager. And this is the most fun part of it. You can extend the package for your own needs. So I created a new observable random event trigger deriving from the observable trigger base. Give it an interval from max and min. Have my own on random subject and an interval and an interval duration, which basically defines the random duration where events happen and I'm setting the current interval to a new interval which is basically just a random range between min and max. After that I'll check every update. In this case I used a different approach I called transform update as observable. Subscribe to it, create an interval duration based on the time delta time and if this duration is bigger or the same as the current interval and there is an on random subject unit event whatever you want to call it stream basically for a reactive approach we'll call on next with the unit default and after that we're going to reset this and generate a new interval so the magic happens here by checking when our current random duration is over and we're generating a new interval and we again will check how long it takes to check when the duration is over. Trigger the event. Here is the on random event that's observable where we're returning the on random or creating a new subject for this event. Raise on completed on destroy if the stream is completed. And again, here is just generating the new interval. And if you put these four simple scripts together, you can just 
create a small game. In this case, I'm just moving the cube around, trying to hit other cubes with the same color. And if I don't do that, I get minus points. If I hit the same color, I will get points. And that's it. So thank you for watching. Please consider becoming a channel member so you get access to the source code directly. Like and subscribe. Comment if you like that, if you have ever worked with Reactive in Unity and have different approaches or you worked with UniRx before, leave a comment too. I'd love to hear experiences and maybe you have some small tips to even improve this simple game or you have made a Reactive game yourself. And I hope you had fun. I hope you liked it. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.